Hello everyone and welcome to this new section. In this section, we're going to discuss two very famous techniques um, mainly used for classification and they are called decision trees and random forest classification algorithms. All right, so first let's go ahead and have a quick overview of the definition and then we're gonna dig right away into the practical example and we're gonna see that decision trees are actually very, very simple, very straightforward, and it resembles what we do in real life when we wanted to make decision in general. Regarding, let's say, buying a car, um, finding a job, any decision basically involved decision tree. All right, so let's see. So decision trees are supervised machine learning techniques where the data is split according to a certain condition or parameter. All right. So let's take a look at a quick example and that will be very clear, the statement that I just mentioned. Let's assume that we wanted to classify customers and we let's assume that you work for a bank for instance and you have a customer coming in and you wanted to give him or her an advice whether to retire or not based on their features. So each customer come into the bank and they have specific features. The features are savings, which is you know all their lifetime savings and their age. And then you, as you know, kind of a banker or let's say a data scientist who is working at a bank, you wanted to develop a model that can kind of, you know, decides whether that, that customer will be eligible to retire or not. Okay, let's take a look at the data. So on the x-axis here, we have the savings of whatever customer. And on the y-axis here, we have their age. And this is simply the data points that we collected out of all our customers within the bank, okay? So it appears like we have two classes, class zero here, which is the red bubbles in here, and we have class blue in here, okay? So simply put, what you could do in a very, very simple form, you know, like let's assume that you are a very experienced banker, senior banker in there, and then, you know, based on your knowledge, based on your experience, you can guess, you can ask pretty much like very simple questions. First question is, okay, can you tell me please what your savings are? So that's the first question. So you can ask the customer, okay, are you, is your savings greater than $1 million or not? This is a very simple question, okay? So the customer, we're going to reply, we're going to tell you, well, yes or no, okay? So if the customer said, you know, like your savings, my savings are less than $1 million, okay? You will going to classify them as well. These are, you know, th this is class zero, okay? That that customer cannot retire at the moment, okay? No matter what age it is. So it seems like $1 million is basically kind of the minimum or the threshold if you wanted to classify a customer if they are eligible to retire or not. Obviously, you might think, okay, $1 million is a large number, but for example, if you live, let's say, in Silicon Valley or something, $1 million won't last, won't last, won't, won't last like longer. Okay, yes, $1 million anywhere probably in the world would, you know, you would, you can retire, you know, when you're like 25 years old, no problem. Okay, so if you are, if your savings are greater than $1 million, okay, that's the question, okay. If they are greater than $1 million, then maybe there is a probability or we can, okay, we can maybe allow the customers to retire. But if their savings are less than $1 million, well, you don't know, no, you are class zero. You are not eligible to retire. And if you take a look at the graph here, this is basically... Uh, what's resembled here. So this is kind of our threshold. So $1 million is our threshold. If you are below this, you are class red. You are class zero. And if you are more than $1 million, let's talk. You know, there is another criteria that we need to take into account to say if the customer is eligible to retire or not. And that criteria is simply our age, which is the other feature that the customer can provide you with. So the next question you're gonna ask, okay, could you please tell me your age? So the age will be, if, is your age greater than 45? So the question is, if your age is greater than 45, if it's yes, then you're gonna say, well, you are class one, then you are eligible to retire. So simply put, the criteria is, if you have $1 million and your age is 45, then you're good to go, then you will be eligible to retire. Other than that, you know, does you still have a little bit more to go, you still to increase your savings or maybe get a little bit older, okay? So that's again, if your age is less than 45 and here, so you be categorized into class zero. All right, and that's pretty much decision trees in a nutshell. 
We do that on a daily basis when we, let's say, decide, okay, are we gonna go out, for example, you know, on a weekend or not? So you check, is the weather good or not? And then do I have money or not? And then, you know, like are there people who I like who are gonna go out or not? And based on all these collective decisions, you decide, am I gonna go out or not? Which is class zero or class one? Again, you do that on a daily basis and that's how we're gonna develop our decision trees in a nutshell. All right, I hope it was pretty straightforward, pretty simple. Let's take a look at, at basically a couple of definitions. So the tree simply, again, we develop, it's pretty much the exact same tree, but we need to have a couple of definitions. So there are some of the definitions within a decision tree is what we call it decision nodes, and some other definitions, what we call it leaves. Think of it as a tree, okay? So decision node, okay, are where the data is split based on a certain attribute. So for example, this here orange you know, box is a decision node because you are asking kind of a question and based on that question, you're gonna go here or here, right? However, this is what we call it a leaf, okay? Why? Because this is kind of you know, a final outcome or kind of a decision that has already been made. You know, for example, when we asked the customer when, we went, when they came in, is, are, is your savings more than $1 million or not, right? If they said no, it is less than $1 million, well, we classify them to class zero already, right away. So, so this is what we call a decision node. And this is a final outcome. There is no questions to be asked. Okay, that's it. You know, you are class zero and that's it. So that means this is what we call it the leaf, which is kind of at the end of the tree. Okay, so we call it decision has been made or a final outcome. All right, okay. And obviously there's a lot of mathematics involved behind, behind the scenes, but we're not gonna dig into any of these mathematics. Here I'm just gonna show you the intuition from a very high level, and we're gonna dig right away into the Jupyter Notebook and start program right away and see how can we apply decision trees in practice. But the overall idea for the decision trees is that it tries to optimize, or the objective is mainly to optimize or minimize the entropy, which provides the optimum split. So it tries to find kind of what is the optimum split within our two categories, within our classes. All right, again, I'm not gonna go into the mathematics of it. And if you guys wanted to read more about it, I have some additional references for you guys. But let's go ahead and take a look at another example before we go into the uh, additional reading material. So let's assume that you wanted to, for example, launch a marketing campaign, or let's say you are, um, for example, like a bank, okay? and you are trying to kind of segment your market or segment your customers, okay? So we, this is again a different example. So this is a completely different example, completely. Again, it's in the, within the banking or the finance industry, but it's independent on the previous example. So let's assume that you have here on the x-axis the income of a customer, and on the y-axis you have your credit score, okay? So in the US, for instance, uh, or Canada, uh, what happened is basically, you know, like banks categorize customers based on their credit score. Credit score is very important. For example, if you mess up, let's say, credit card payments, or you are, you know, like, let's say you file, file for bankruptcy or something, you are, you're in trouble. You know, the, they will increase your interest rates, they will give you hard time, you know, so it's not, your credit score is like one of the most important factors if you wanted to get, you know, like loans or, or do well in general. So... This is simply credit score, you know, the number, number range, let's say to uh, around 800, the max. So 650 is an okay, 750 is a great credit score. That's a good one. That means, you know, banks will run after you, we're gonna lend you money at a very low interest rate. Income, let's say average 100K, 200K is a good number. That's a great number. And the overall idea is banks try to do kind of customer segmentation. They try to segment the, um, the, um, their customers based on different questions. So the first question is, again, very, very similar to what we have done in the past. Is your credit score less than 750? The question is, it's yes or it's no, okay? And that's pretty much what you guys can see here. That's the first question. If your credit score is less than 750, so you belong to this category, this area, right? If it's more than 750, so you belong to this category, right? Okay, that's the first step. So your first question is, is credit score less than 750? Yes, so you are here. No, then you are here, right? Okay, so let's keep going. So if it's no, which means you are here, right? So that means your credit score is more than 750. 
That means you are in good shape, by the way, okay? And then you'll say, okay, is your income less than $100,000? So if your income is less than $100,000, yes, then you will be classified as class zero, which means you are here in the blue class. If you are no, that means your income is more than $100,000, then you will be classified here as class one, okay? Again, please bear in mind that, you know, these examples, you know, are kind of just very rough examples. There might be more than one class. There might be more kind of advanced, you know, like, like decisions behind, behind the scenes. But this is just a very famous kind of very, I'm sorry, very simple uh, example that demonstrate how can you actually dig further and divide, you know, and, and categorize, you know, um, um, customers based on more than one feature okay so one is credit score more or less here income more or less then you can have more than one class the next question is okay so is your credit score less than 750 yes so that means here you are in this region okay is your income less than two hundred thousand dollars if it's less than two hundred thousand dollars then you are here right okay so if you are here then which means this, that means you are belong to class one, all right? If it's no, then we have additional questions to ask. Why? Because you are, you are, you are somewhere in here, right? So you are gonna ask, okay, is your credit score less than 650? So if your credit score less than 650, which means you're here, yes, then you're class one. If it's no, then you belong to this very small portion here, which is class zero. Okay, again, these points doesn't mean, you know, I don't want you to kind of, you know, get an idea of what, what they mean by, by these incomes and credit scores. This overall idea is to just, you know, show you that we can actually, within, within a specific division, we can have more than one division. That's the overall concept here. We can have like three or four or ten classes, whatever number of classes we have. This is, again, just a very rough, quick example. And in the next uh, lecture, I'm going to walk you through a detailed video explanation of the practical projects uh, where we can apply decision trees in practice. All right, so I hope you guys were able to figure that out. It was pretty easy. If you guys wanted to have more additional reading material, again, there are two books that are readily available online for free. The first book is called Understanding Machine Learning from Theory to Algorithms. The other one is what's called an introduction to statistical learning. And here you guys can, if you wanted to download the books through these links, and if you go to page 250, in the first book, actually I have it open in here. So this is Understanding Machine Learning. Actually, if you go here, if you search for Decision Trees, actually, let's go back. So that's Decision Trees. Let's actually zoom in. You will find a ton of information. So this is, this is the Decision Trees, if you guys take a look at it. And if you go here, you will find that that's page 250, all right? You will find that pretty much that's what we have been explaining. So for example, if the color, you're asking the color, you're non, not tasty or softness, you're basically classifying, you know, like again, there's tons of examples in here, uh, to classifying papayas, for instance. And here you have all the, you know, mathematics behind it. And there's a ton, tons of information, tons of reading material, but this is pretty, uh, pretty much all what I want you to know when we start to actually apply it in practice. The other book, which is the, um, this book, An Introduction to Statistical Learning in R. If you guys go to page, here I have it, page 303. Let's actually go to it. So you'll find the tree-based algorithms, and here you'll find the basics of decision trees. Again, trying to compare, you know, based on number of years of experience, let's say, a number of hits, for instance, trying to classify um, different people. Here there is like, you know, a couple of salaries, salaries example, and pretty much the same idea, you know, but on different examples. Please, if you'd like to, are interested in mathematics, go ahead and uh, do this additional readings. All right, okay, and that's pretty much all what I have for this lecture. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let's recap what we have done so far. The overall idea of decision trees, it's a supervised machine learning algorithm, and the objective is to try to kind of ask questions and divide your space based on specific thresholds. So for example, here, if you're, you know, your savings of a customer is less than $1 million, you're here, more, you're here, and then you ask, are you 45 years old or young or, or, or older? If yes, you're here. If not, you're here. And that's how you classify basically your data points into different categories or different classes. 
The question is, these, you know, what we call it decision nodes, when we are actually kind of, you know, splitting the data. And the final points is what we call it the leaves. That's when the actual decision or the final outcome has been made. And here we took another example showing that we can actually go further and divide the data, you know, like based on more than one kind of tree or more than one decision. And here we have additional materials if you guys are interested. I hope you guys enjoy this lecture. And in the next lecture, I'm going to walk you through another kind of advanced technique. It's what we call it random forest. And then we're going to be ready to go ahead and start coding uh, in a Python environment. I hope you guys enjoy this lecture and see you in the next one.